Hello everyone. My name is Karina Koski and um, the title of my lecture is Narratives on Afterlife and Symbolic Immortality. I will discuss the central themes in contemporary Finnish imagery concerning afterlife and symbolic immortality. I will first present some theoretical and cultural background and then analyze two different genres which handle the question of afterlife differently. Uh, these genres are first memorial verses in death notices, which represent a poetic register in a ritual frame. And the second is personal reminiscent, reminiscence narratives on death and memory. These uh, represent written colloquial reg register in a private setting. Both genres mostly represent the point of view of the bereaved, those who have late, lately um, lost someone. Um, death culture in Finland is the background, of course, of, of this uh, discourse, and it's roughly similar to other Western countries. There's a legacy of Christianity. In Finland, it is quite uniformly Lutheran. And then there is scientific naturalism and the materialist worldview. Uh, vernacular traditions and alternative spiritual views have a role, but often they are kept in private and hidden, but they are there. Both in life and death nowadays, the emphasis is in this world. Afterlife is increasingly understood as a memory or, or some post-mortem participation in this world. And this is why I also use the concept of symbolic immortality. In our pluralist society, most people do not have a consistent or permanent view on afterlife. And uh, instead they make use of a variety of different uh, narratives on afterlife. By narrative, I mean today uh, meaning-making devices and various imagine, uh, imagined and narrated contents. And, and not a fixed structure of, of narrative. A narrative is also a neutral ter term for contents which may or may not be regarded as true. I also talk about these contents as images. Uh, these are kind of contemporary vernacular belief tradition. And that means that they are culturally circulating themes and motifs. With ha which have context-bound meanings and varying applicability for diverse purposes and contexts. All types of narratives concerning afterlife illustrate the unknown and combine the symbolic and imaginary with the current life world and values. I mentioned symbolic immortality. It's a secular model for afterlife. And it was coined by the psychiatrist Robert, Robert J. Lifton in the 1970s. Symbolic immortality is realized in our contrib contribution to this world and also in our connectedness with phenomena and values which endure. Lifton, uh, listed five modes of symbolic immortality. They are biological, creative, religious, natural, and experiential transcendence. The biological or rather biosocial mode is the most salient in my research materials in which the bereaved wish to continue the family relationship and the legacy beyond death. The biosocial mode refers to continuity in one's genes but also in one's connectedness to the species, family, culture, or imagined communities, such as nation. Connectedness which na with nature is also important in, in this Finnish afterlife scene, and of course the religious mode. In bereavement studies, relationality refers to the human tendency to build one's life and identity in relation to others. In relational practices, uh, the bereaved keep the deceased family members along in their lives, 
they talk about them or they talk to them. They cherish their material and mental legacy. And some people even feel their presence or experience their visits. The idea that the diseased live on in their hearts and minds is the crucial point. And it's the biosocial mode of symbolic immortality. Uh, well, some more words about my research materials. First about the memorial verses. I have collected a database of roughly 1,500 death notices. Uh, they have been published in the leading Finnish newspaper Helsingin Sanomat, mostly in 2017. Publishing death notices is a vernacular custom. Like many other vernacular practices today, it emerges in interaction with institutional actors. Newspapers provide ready online templates for them. The bereaved pay for the publication according to the length of the text. The verse is not obligatory in the death notice, but nine out of 10 death notices include it. Um, the death notice is a public ritual frame, and this guides the selection of the text by the bereaved. They try to find balance between traditionality and personal touch. They would like the text or the notice to somehow reflect the values or personality of the diseased, but also they want it to be appropriate. Here is a typical example of a Finnish death notice. It, it includes the basic information about a person and then uh, the verse. And this verse is quite traditional. It's rhyming in Finnish and it depicts departure and um, death in a sublime way. It includes the typical motifs and is quoting angel, uh, a dead loved one's welcoming the newcomer. And here the pains are gone and the person can now walk herself. The, mem the memorial verses can be uh, from the Bible or hymn book. Sim they can be simple short goodbyes like, like we will meet in heaven. But most of them are poetry or selected parts of poems. There are vernacular poems, usually rhyming, and rhyming poems, anonymous with traditional motives, like the first example. Uh, then there are texts from professional authors, poems or pop lyrics. The author's name is sometimes meant, mentioned, sometimes not, and sometimes the name is wrong. Vernacular discourses constantly adapt new stuff. It's a kind of vernacular appropriation of the work of professionals to common use. Once the poems become part of the common resource, people customize them according to their own needs. They, for example, replace single words or lines with others, they shorten the poems, or they compile new ones by combining parts from various poems. This is actually how, how folk poetry works anyway. Then the other corpus of texts is private memories and thoughts in colloquial written register. It's a collection of personal reminiscence narratives from 2014 on the title Death, Loss and Memory. The collection is housed in the Finnish Literature Society's Folklore Archive. It consists of one, well, 101 uh, responses and consists of uh, 550 pages. The writers could choose themselves what they like to write about death and loss. And not all of them discuss afterlife at all, but many of the writers share very intimately their thoughts and experiences and also uh, those which they have not wanted to discuss any, with anyone face to face. So many of them found it a good opportunity to be able to discuss thing, things that others may not be willing to share with them because death, not everybody wants to discuss death. 
all in all, this research material is very rich and I have to restrict the discussion today to the most relevant themes and they are uh, Christianity, nature and relationality. I will start with the Christian imagery. imagery. Uh, Christianity has a default position in discussions of afterlife. Uh, yet the ideas about Christian heaven are diverse. There's this Lutheran official view and um, according to that the dead are in a sleep-like state until the judgment day and it's only on the last day that people will be reunited with their loved ones. Most informants don't, well, they skip this, this sleep-like state. Uh, they favor the popular view in which the disease go right away to heaven. Uh, this follows the modern concept of heaven, which was formulated by the mysticist Emanuel Swedenborg in late 18th century. The modern heaven is a material place with senses and all kinds of activities, and it resembles greatly the life on earth. Each person, each person experiences heaven in their own way, according to their personal qualities. And this means that heaven is customized for each and everyone individually. Also, the writers, writers people are gradually develop into angels. And that is important, that uh, the dead become angels is very common in, in popular Christianity. The possibility of reunion has used to be important and motivated people to live good Christian lives. Uh, today, it is more common to continue the bond here and now and not to expect a reunion later. There is a clear uh, difference between younger and older generations. The older ones uh, can stick to this Lutheran view and the younger ones may not even know it probably, probably, properly. But um, well, in the memorial verses, the Lutheran view is, is very well uh, represented. Many texts refer to going home to heaven or to angels, which is caused the disease, like, like the earlier example, which I showed. And, and another example, of an angel uh, sounds like this. An angel walked beside the bed and quietly closed grandma's eyes. Now a bright and warming sun will shine to her eternally. I assume that the eternal, eternal sunshine refers to heaven. In the Lutheran church manual, the consolation for the dying includes a request for the angels to carry the diseased to heaven. The Lutheran idea of angels as the personnel of God is absent in the personal narratives. Instead, the dead themselves become angels. This is the Swedenborgian idea. As angels, they watch over the living and perhaps help and guide them. According to the sociologist of death, Tony Walter, this type of angel discourse has strengthened recently and it's quite typical in internet. It allows interaction better than with souls, and it gives more agency to the diseased to be cared for as baby angels and to care for others, for example, um, grandfather, grandparents as angels. In my materials, however, in this Finnish context, it seems that the diseased need not be angels to interact with the survivors. Next, I will show five examples of the reminiscence narratives which comment upon the Christian afterlife beliefs. I assume that you can read these texts yourselves. Uh, I only comment on, upon them. Uh, this writer uh, believes in heaven. Her grandparents are awake and care about her. The freezing nights in this text uh, refer uh, to dark sky with stars. It is usual to explain that the dead people become stars in the sky. Um, I was kind of expecting that it would be an alternative to heaven and, and God and angels, but no, 
actually they are combined with each other. It seems that, that this is how the dead in heaven manifest themselves to us. The next one is adulting Thomas and doesn't believe in, in eternal life. She mention, mentions guidance from the diseased relatives and friends. And that's something that is typically uh, or most likely um, handed down in, in family traditions. But these traditions are seldom are discussed in public. I approach them as something that Diane Goldstein and Amy Schumann have called the stigmatized vernacular. Uh, they are a bit hidden, but quite common. The third, this text was written by a woman who had terminal cancer. And um, it shows that even though she doesn't believe in the church or Christianity, it is a norm somehow to comment on Christianity and, and when you are discussing death and afterlife. In Finnish, it's a long tradition that, that decent people are supposed to belong to the church. Uh, this tradition is rapidly declining. Uh, about nowadays, about 70% of Finns are members of the Lutheran Church, and that, that's why she mentions that, that her husband doesn't allow her to resign. The fourth one is about reunion. The writer had felt in the ritual context that it was appropriate to mention reunion, and now she questions the idea. Reunion goes together with relationality, but it's not equally appealing to everybody. Finally, she resolves the problem by returning to the normal mode in which she doesn't think about death or afterlife at all. The fifth one is perhaps a smaller text, so I will read this um, aloud. Granny had once told me about how they daydreamed with a friend what heaven would be like. There you could eat as much chocolate as you liked without gaining weight, and you could drink brandy whenever you wanted, and you could always start a new knitting work from lovely yarns, even though the previous one would not have been finished yet. To me, she said, she could not believe there to be a heaven like that, but neither that there wouldn't be anything after death. Some moving energy could perhaps exist. I have resigned from the church because I'm not religious. I believe in science and natural forces. Some kind of transformation in natural cycle would be possible. Grandmothers become trees and flowers. Uh, this example showed a, a personally customized heaven, which, which resembles this um, Swedenborg's idea. However, the old ladies were clearly discussing their desires, which they, as self-disciplined people, chose to restrain from in this world. Um, as the grandmother said, it was a daydream. Uh, the writer mentions grandmothers becoming trees and flowers, and she refers to a poem when grannies die. I will discuss um, that poem soon. Uh, I will go to natural imagery uh, next. The natural theme includes the consoling and soothing impact of the nature. Sometimes the memorial verse only describes some natural view or the idea that the deceased continue their lives in nature. These clearly present symbolic immortality as connectedness with the natural environment. The ecological idea of nature cycle can be explicit and concrete. For example, that the ashes will fertilize forests. In my material, this idea is only expressed as a scenario of one's own afterlife. In some other European countries, the idea is realized in so-called natural burial, in which sometimes a tree is 
can be planted upon, upon the ashes and, and the tree symbolizes the deceased. That is not yet practiced in Finland. Um, the law doesn't allow it yet. But the idea that the, that the diseased continue their conscious existence in nature is also very appealing. And it is expressed in many poems, and especially in the poem When Grannies Die, which when Grannies Die, which I mentioned earlier. I'll show it to you. When grannies die, they become flower meadows and hay, and some grannies become trees, and they sow about their grandchildren, covering them from rain and wind, and spread their branches in winter like a snowy shelter upon them. But before that, they are passionate. Uh, there is a vernacular replacement for the last line. But before that, they lived their lives. For somebody, the combination of grandmother and passion was too much. Yeah. Uh, there has been internet discussion about this poem, and it shows that that especially many women have been deeply touched by this poem. They may think about their late mother as a tree sheltering their kids, or they can identify um, to this themselves. Yes, this is something that I will be when I'm dead. The poem applies a natural metaphor to express the continuity of important relationships and a meaningful role in this world. The tree grandmother also provides an alternative to angel grandmothers. A similar shift from Christian to natural imagery can be seen in poems in which not the angels, but the wind carries the deceased away or brings messages from them. Uh, I'll read one example. Soft and gentle winds take him with you and carry him tenderly to the place where the tired can have their repose. The poems which show the diseased manifesting themselves in natural phenomena are very popular in, in, in the death notices. Uh, the next poem presents the diseased manifesting in the wind, glinting light and birdsong, and even actively contacting the bereaved as a whiff on their cheek. I will show it. Here. The poem lists many phenomena in which the diseased is manifest or, or is lurking there in the nature. Some of you may notice a striking similarity with the poem, Do Not Stand at My Grave and Weep. It is assumed to be written in the 1930s, and it has lately been internationally circulating in diverse contexts. This Finnish poem has been popularly ascribed to the poet Eino Leino, but even though he has handled similar themes, this is not his work. His name is just very attractive, and some other poems also have been um, ascribed to him wrongly. Natural imagery in connection with death can be seen as an alternative to Christianity, as in these previous examples, but it also belongs to Christian tradition. Uh, the unseen and spiritual and the Lord's goodness is shown to people in the great book of nature. Also, some recent theological currents identify God with the universe, and therefore a kind of melting into universe and into this environment can be a version of Christian afterlife as well. And it can also be an esoteric idea. 
and therefore most of the natural imagery is polysemous. This makes it particularly useful in the public ritual frame. It is a common scenario that the death notice is prepared and published by offspring with a scientific worldview to commemorate a grandmother with a religious outlook. The ambiguous poem suits them all. Then I will uh, go on to relationality. Relationality has been present in these earlier examples all the time. In addition, dozens of short verses simply state a relational continuity. For example, you will live on in our hearts or the memories and love remain. Words like these can be, well, they are appropriate and, and customary and they are sometimes just words. You never know about these um, verses when they are published, what the people have really thought about the verse. Uh, the reminiscence narratives reveal that some people actively cherish the bond. Uh, this does not require belief in the spiritual existence of the deceased, but it responds to the needs of the bereaved. One woman wrote that, that she um, wrote to her recently deceased mother a letter because she was missing her so much and she had so many things to tell her. A handful of others report speaking to the deceased at the grave. Many feel that the diseased go on in the material ob objects and tools which symbolize their memory and skills which were learned from them. So in the practical uh, domestic life, people can remember their grandmother all the time by making some food which she used to make with the same equipment that, that were inherited from her. Connectedness uh, of the diseased also in cultural products carries them on. Carries them on. And uh, as in the following quote, still every day comes into my mind some memory, proverb, song, feeling, or some other thing to which the diseased is somehow connected. Thus, I feel that our dead relatives still live in our life, even though we cannot see them or talk with them. Perhaps the dead live on in the mental legacy which they left in our innermost being while living. This is what I believe. Another method to keep the disease part of the social life is to talk about them, but it does not always work. Other people to whom the disease was not equally important may get tired of it. While some amount of relationality and continuity is expected and appropriate, after some limit, you better keep, keep it to yourself. Other people do not want to hear about your dead. This is something that the writers have complained and the uh, writing call has been a very welcome way to them to be able to share their thoughts about death. Um, in this lecture, it has been only possible to discuss the most common and salient themes of afterlife narratives. To conclude, I will present some characteristics and differences between uh, these two genres. Uh, three most common features, which are typical to the poetic reg register, but not to the colloquial one, are the following. First, richness of the forms of manifesting oneself in nature, as shown in the examples. Second, frequency of the escorting angels. In the prose narratives, angels do not take this role so often. It's rather the dead loved ones who come and fetch or welcome the dying. The third point is metaphorical journeys to the afterlife. Mostly it is motives referring to crossing a water, such as boat and harbor, harbor motives. Crossing the water is obviously a traditional image of traveling to the land of death. While it is very common in the memorial verses, and uh, nobody actually speaks about it in, real, in realistic register. In their own context, in the poetic register, these are valid expressions, but 
this cannot be realistically transferred to other contexts. But then there are three characteristics which are only typical to private memories in colloquial register. First, the explicit critique towards Christian ideas about heaven. This is possible because the writers need not care about what others think or what is appropriate because it is a very private, private setting. And because there are no formal restrictions, they can also reason their arguments and compare the pros and cons if they like. Second, customized heavens. The one which I showed was a bit playful, but there are descriptions of heaven uh, which have been, for example, visited in a dream. But all these are too personal to function in a collective ritual. They are, they are a bit hushed and they are kept private. Third, visits by the, by the diseased in this world. Encounters with the dead are in Finland a bit better accepted than other otherworldly or uncanny experiences, but still they are largely stigmatized as well and often evoke suspicion about the sanity of the experiencer. Such ideas are not generally recommended in public and definitely they are not recommended in memorial verse. Namely, this notice is a ritual genre and one of its aims is to express acceptance to the loss and to declare a permanent new status for the diseased. In this respect, they kind of resemble mortuary laments. Therefore, it's not the right place to question the boundary by suggesting a visit, unless it is cloaked in a metaphor. The manifestations of the diseased in nature kind of suggest that the dead, that the dead are hanging around. They could perhaps be seen or they might even actively take contact to the, brief, the, to the bereaved as a whiff in their cheek. It is usual in contemporary belief tradition and also stated in esoteric spirituality that the diseased stay around their former life world before they continue their journey further. And sometimes it is possible for them to make themselves manifest to their loved ones. I don't think this would be the most common interpretation of the popular natural images, but it is possible. While in colloquial, colloquial register, in a private context, it is possible to express accurate, accurately one's thoughts and opinions, there are also emotions which are difficult to grasp or express, and those can be better formulated in poetic register. The prose writings are more realistic about what people really think, but it does not lessen the role of the poetic register, which allows people to express the improbable and impossible, which they may wish. You just need to know how to make it right. Thank you. <laughs>